Hello, Diane here. I'm at Ranger Headquarters in New Jersey. I bet you thought I was at home with my cupboards, but no, no, this isn't Reefley Towers, it's Ranger Headquarters. Um, so I'm in my office and I was going to do a few videos and I got collared by one of the customer service people and they said, um, we seem to be getting a lot of inquiries of people who are unsure about some things to do with the ink. Um, some people don't know which colours mix together, some people don't know why they get brown, some people um, are not sure how to use them. So I thought, oh, I'll do a little informative video on, on the inks for you. Okay, so here we go. So I have 24 inks in the Dilution line, um, 24 colours of inks. And a lot I find when I'm teaching as well, a lot of people say, we, we make mud, we, we do what you do, but we don't get the colours you do. And so when I'm teaching now, I split the colours into three separate baskets like this. I have one set which has all the warm colours in, and I'm going to explain this to you. I have one set that has the cool colours, and then I have one set that has um, everything that coordinates and the thing that doesn't coordinate. So if ever you come to a class with me now, this is what you'll see on the table. So I'll just whisk through. So I have 10 colours in each of these baskets and these four. Black and white go with anything, okay? So I have black and white in this basket and they will go with anything, any of the other colours in the other two baskets. And also grey, because grey is a derivative of black. So they're called non-colours and they, they go together really well. Now this is Diane's version of colour wheel. It's not necessarily, um, you, you know, the official version. But when, you, when you're when you inking with inks, what happens is one spray comes like this, one spray comes like this, and it meets in the middle and it makes another colour. And that's why the colour wheel works quite slightly differently when you're doing inking. Okay, so also in this basket is the little culprit that normally causes the problems. And this is crushed grape, which is a purple. This can cause a lot of brown. So in a class situation, I take it out, I put it in this basket out the way until I've explained it all to you. And then um, I, I show you what it goes with. Okay, so we'll just put those to one side for now. So then I'm left with two baskets like this. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take the colours out and then I'm going to explain the colours to you and put them back in. Okay, so these baskets you can get, I think, three for a dollar or you get them in the dollar stores, the pound stores. So I call this selection the cool colours because green and blues are very cool looking colours, okay? So, and I have two, um, there's two families really in in the cool selection. There are the blue family and the green family and yellow comes under the green family, okay? And then in the warm selection, there's the brown and oranges and then there's the pinks and reds. So I'll start with the lemon zest, okay? So this is the yellow, which is going to go in the green, green one, so that's lemon zest. And then we have fresh lime, which is the light green, the bright green. Put grass, which is the mid, the mid range green. Dirty Martini, which is one of my favourite, although it's not one of the brightest ones. It's just a lovely colour, is that? And then the dark in that colour, because I have a dark in each of the colour families. So the dark, oh, I polished jade, I forgot about polished jade, I'm so sorry, that's a green. And then the dark in that family is the chopped pesto, so that's the dark green. And then with the blues, we have London blue, vibrant turquoise, calypso teal, and after midnight. So after midnight is the dark in the blues. So that makes up the 10 of the, the cool collection. And then we have the warm collection. And again, you can see the reds and oranges and pink, the colours that make you feel quite warm. If you're sat in front of a fire, these are the colours that you would think. So again, there's two families. There's the um, brown oranges and there's the pink reds. So in the brown orange, we start with an orangey yellow. Now, yes, it's a yellow. There was a yellow in the other basket. But if you look at them together, you can see that this is a much cooler yellow. This is a warm orangey yellow. So that's why that one's over there and this is in here. Then we go through the oranges. To excuse me, I've got allergies because it's so sunny here. So I'm just sniffing a little bit. So we've got the, the uh, pure sunshine. Then we have squeezed orange, which is the orange. Tangerine deep dream, which is the deep the really vibrant orange uh, and then with the browns we have melted chocolate and then the dark that goes with all of those is ground coffee the dark brown and then we come on to the pink and reds so we will start off with bubblegum pink which is the bright pink funky fuchsia which is um, a deeper pink 
postbox red, cherry pie, and then the dark of those is the pomegranate seed. Okay, um, and before I explain a little bit more there, I just want to show you, this is my book. This is the distinctly dilutional book, and it's nearly, most, well, in fact, nearly all of the ink techniques that I do are in this book, okay? And what's nice about the book is, you can see it's all hand done, but the, um, we have step-by-step, -step, so I talk about, this is ghosting, I talk about it, tell you what I've used, and give you a full-size picture. Of what it's supposed to look like and then if you turn the page you have the steps so step by step by step by step how to do it but also on page 15 uh, yeah you see I've remembered I can do it on so this is called background basics color theory cool and warm okay so this is color theory for inks so I explain here why you need color theory just like I've explained to you and then here there are ev I've written down every single color there is in the cool collection Okay, so you can go and you can look at it here. Here is every single colour in the warm. This is talking about the crushed grape. And then these are the neutrals, your staples, your black and white. So it's all there in the book for you as well. Okay. So um, I'll come on to the purple in a minute. So when I'm teaching, one side of the table has the colours. One side of the table has the warms. They use them and then we swap. And it, the way we do it like this is every single colour here goes together. You don't have to go, oh, does that go with this? Does it go with this? They all go together. So I can just pick any three. I, I always seem to use three. I'm not sure why, but I always have. But I can pick any three and they will go together. Same here. I can pick any three and they will go together. So this means if you just stick to using the separate baskets, your work will always look beautiful. You'll always have a really good um, result. Whereas what people have, have done in the past, they've sort of used them across the baskets. Okay. So now we're going to talk about the crushed grape because it is beautiful. If you are using the cools, okay, this looks beautiful with anything blue. So if I just put these here for you, if you put the purple with any of these colours, it would look absolutely beautiful. But if you put it with any of these remaining greens, you just get muddy brown, okay? So these are the good ones in the cool collection. If you come to the warm collection, if you put it with anything red or pink, it's going to look absolutely beautiful, gorgeous. But if you put it with anything orange or brown, you are going to get brown, okay? So that's how we, simple that is. And also purple is one of the only colours that you could use one from this basket and the purple and one from this basket. So that's always gorgeous as well, okay? Now if you like muddy brown, you can use anything you like. But I find when I'm going around, most people don't really want muddy brown. So that's what I do with the colour um, selections. I use only warm. I use only cool and then you can add other colours on um, when you come to do the rest of the backgrounds but when you're doing a basic background that's all I do okay so that's the colour theory for that um, another question I get asked all the time is um, well people say my ink's blocked my ink spray's blocked it's you know it's blocked it's very very rare it's blocked because there's nothing in there to block Okay, the, my inks are just made, you can see it's just pure liquid with some resin in, so there isn't a lot to block. What usually happens is people shake them, they shake them like this, and so they get air bubbles. Now, inside the inks, I'll show you with this one because I've left a chance of spilling it on myself. These are the bottles, and so this is the spritzer top, and I call this the straw. So the straw goes in, and if you shake it, when you start to pump it, sometimes the straw can pull the bubbles up. Okay, so the bubbles go up here and you've got a vacuum at the top, nothing can work. So this is how you would get an ink going again. This is what I do. I, I, this one is working, but if it wasn't, I hold it down by the thumb and create a vacuum. I hold it for about 10 to 15 seconds. I create a vacuum. Then when I take this off and start pumping, it will pull the bubble out of the top and then it, will, it won't clog. Okay, so that's what I always do with them. It's useful at the end of a session if you just wipe these, 
because the resin can sometimes just dry a little bit on there and so if your ink is coming out say at a funny angle you've probably got dried resin just on the nozzle here okay but that's all I do and it's usually a bubble and people don't realize and so again when I'm in class people say this isn't working it isn't working and I go and hold it down and then it and it's working so that's the thing to do very very occasionally very occasionally the actual spray top itself will have broken um, it's very very unusual and it'll either be as soon as you buy it and it's a faulty top or it could be one that you've had a long time and done but sometimes if this won't go down it's the actual sprayer that's broken so now we've brought them out in a two pack you can get a two pack of replacement sprayers um, to put on the top and it comes two packs of the misters with the lids and then you can just replace them okay these are really really useful if you've clogged your white because your white does have a pigment in the white has a pigment in there um, and the white's slightly different to the other inks because all the other inks are just liquid this has a pigment and the way I describe this is it's a bit like a snow globe oh actually oh it's not a snow globe but it is a it's a skull globe so you saw it was clear and when you shake shake it can you see all the particles come up to the top okay and that's what happens with a white ink the um when you shake it the particles mix now when we're making these inks they go around and they go around like this and these get filled with ink and then the straw goes in now i don't know if you can see, you see where, where's all the particles gone they've gone to the bottom so as this goes round the white goes round all the particles of the pigment sit at the bottom and then this lid gets put straight on the top so all the particles it's easier to show you with this one so the, the white particle the snow would be here okay it then sits on our shelves waiting to be go go out it then sits on the store shelves then we buy them and what do we do we store everything upright like this so when you pick it up and come to spray it this straw is actually sat in the snow so you're just going to suck the pigment up and it's just going to block completely if it does that you need to buy these new tops and you need to put a new top on so how do you get around that you always store them sideways if ever you come to one of my classes the whites will be like that if you see me use um perfect pearl, uh, perfect pearl mists which we make if ever I've got them in a class, they're laid sideways like this in my studio. Because if they're laid sideways, what happens? If we shake this and then we lay it sideways, it's black snow and everything. But where does the snow go? It goes here. So if you take this home and lay it sideways, your snow is going to go here. So when you pick it up and spray it, the snow is not, you know, if you do it by accident, it's not going to come out. Then you just swoosh it. Don't shake it because we're already talking about bubbles. Just swoosh it round like that. And then when you spray, the, it will be evenly and evenly uh, separated. And then put the lid back on and lay it down like this and your snow will come right down to the bottom. Okay? And then, and do that with all, anything. Any, I mean, you might have other people's sprays. Um, and then, you know, if there's some have got mica in or pearl, and that, to me, that's the way to do it. And if you do that right from the start, you won't, you'll never need to put a new top on these white ones, okay? Um, in class, I put them all out, laid down. And when I start the class, everybody's stood up like that. And I'm like, put your whites back down again. So just a little note on that one. And it's the only one of mine that does it because it's the only one with a pigment in, but also the perfect pearl mist. So that was another thing that I get asked a lot about. What else do I get asked? Um, oh, inking, inking in the journals. Um, people, it's a long time really since I've done a, a proper inking video. So I thought I would go back through again and do just an inking video. And so you can see close up, we'll get the camera to come down here. So you can see close up when I start how much ink we want to do. But first of all, what I do, I'm using one of the large journals. I always find the centre of a signature. I'm not sure if you can see there where the running stitch goes down. A signature is a group of pages that are then folded in half and sewn in. That's what a signature is. So if you're looking for the signature, if you do this and only half the page comes up, that's not the middle of a signature. 
So if you do this and the whole page comes up, you are. And then what I do is I hold it at one side and I just gently tear that down and tear that that way, okay? So both of them come out together because I'm gonna use this for something, you'll see. It's, when you have a book with a signature, you have to take both of them out. And instead of being rough and pulling it because you can damage your stitching, you just gently do it like that, okay? So what I, uh, when I'm inking, I usually, in the large journal, I usually just do one side. This might have been already decorated. So I take this piece and I place it over because I don't want to ink that side, okay? So I'm going to be doing this side here. Now the first thing that I do when I'm inking is I add water. Two reasons I add water. The first reason I add water is um, that when you spray, remember me saying spray comes like this, the first droplets will hit the page and they will just soak straight in. So, because this is a very dry, porous surface. And I don't, I don't want that look, I want a very blended look. So if there is a misting of water on there, it will just it will go into the water and soak in together so that's one reason and the other reason is to blend the colors a little bit as well now this is what I call a misting of water can you see like a little spritz across this is what I see a lot of people do that's a puddle they do it there they'll do it there they'll do it there that's not what I mean so again you can see I just lightly spritz over so that the page is damp so I, I do that take that pet spritz over with water and then I always use three colors so I'm gonna go with the warm so today I'm just gonna I'll use the pure sunshine I'll use the orange and I'll use pink I'll use the pink and uh, I'll use the deep the, the deep orange that we'll use that okay I always use three colors now when oh I'm sorry could you just pass me a pen out of that drawer Thank you, because I'm just going to show you how I do. Um, when I use three colours, I always use, do it in two areas. Two areas, she's <laughs> trying to get the pen without the camera going. I'm terrible on them. Oh, wonderful, thank you. So I use um, each colour twice. So if there's three colours twice, that gives me six areas that I um, do. So for example, the yellow would go there and there, the pink would go here and here, the orange would go here and here. So that is a big area to cover, can you see? Now if you just pick this up and just spritz, you're not going to cover that area at all. So when I cover this area, it takes about five or six spritzes of ink, that's how much ink I use. So I'd probably put this red there and there, as I say, then I'll do the next one. So the red will be there and there. Next colour, which might be the yellow, would go like this, but it would also overlap onto this red. Can you see? Then the last colour would go like this and overlap, and overlap off the edges as well. And that's how much ink you do. And people are always surprised how much ink I use. And some people think, oh, it looks a bit, it's going to waste it. But we're going to mop it up with this second sheet. Okay, so this is how much ink we use. So I'm going to come down to the bulk. I'm going to add the water and I'm going to talk you through it. So I take my water. Oh, I know what I need to say. I hold my spray at this angle. If you hold your spray at this angle, <clears throat> As the ink gets lower down, it's going to struggle to come up the straw and you're going to suck bubbles up. But if you, so if you hold it at this angle and also spray comes out in this angle. So if you spray from here, your spray is going to do this. You're going to cover the world and his wife, your cats, your husband, everything. So you need to spray close. Okay, so we'll come down and first of all, I'm just going to spritz over. You might not see this because this is water but I'm just going to spritz over the page with water. Then I'm going to pick up my first colour. Watch how much I use. A big puddle of my first colour. It was about five or six sprays. The second puddle of my first colour. Pick up my second colour. A big puddle of my second colour. Can you see how I've overlapped? Second puddle of my second colour. Then I'll pick up my third colour, big puddle of my third colour, last puddle of my third colour. A lot of ink and you have to do it quite quick. I usually put a little spritz of water back over the top, pick up the mop-up sheet, place it down on top 
and with my kitchen roll I press it because I want to press it quite firm to transfer the ink and then I just peel them apart and then roll the kitchen roll over to blot okay I'm just going to take the kitchen roll and wipe this normally I would do I would have another journal or tags or pages and I would oh, pick up any excess ink from underneath okay but then can you see how you get that beautiful blended look so this was the page in the journal and this is the separate page and I always end up with two whatever I do whether I'm making two tags or whether I'm making two pages but that's how you get the blended you have to use that much ink to do it okay and when I'm when I, people panic as well but look look at my journal is the ring coming down there? I think so. Is the ring coming down the side? Is the ring coming down here? This is what your journal will be like. I deliberately chose a brand new one to show you. It's this ink on the back because ink does what it does. It's a bit like a cat. It does what it wants, when it wants, if it wants. A bit like me, really. But that's what happens. So, but that's how you get that really smooth look. Now, if you're getting the inks out to do that, you might as well ink loads of pages. So what I would normally do then is I would turn here, I would ink another page, turn, go to the, you know, go to the cools and I ink loads and loads of different pages. What I don't do is ink any of the backs on the same day because you, people, people think this is dry. If you feel this, this is dry. If I just show you this page that I've just done, if you look on the back of the page, there's nothing you can see. Can you, you know, because a lot of people tell me they get bleed through. There is nothing there you can see on the back of the page. Now, if I turned it over and inked the back of the page, all the colours would come through onto here. Okay? So my rule is, if you do one side, you cannot put any ink on the other side for 24 hours. Because this is so thin, and it feels dry, people think it's dry, and it's not. The core inside is, is saturated. If you imagine a mattress, a mattress is usually quite thick like this. If you tip some water on a mattress, it would soak through to the middle. Now, if you left it, the top would evaporate, and the top of the mattress would feel dry. And you'd be like, oh, that feels dry. But if you sat on it, you'd actually get a wet bottom because it's still wet in here. So if you flipped that mattress over and added moisture this side, it's going to come down, it's going to meet that moisture in the middle and it's just going to all soak together. So my rule, 24 hours before you do this. You have to ha add water, you add the ink and you have to mop it. You have to really thoroughly go through and mop that to lift it off. And as you can see, nothing that's a little bit of ink from my fingers but you can see nothing has gone through now it will go through some of the stitching i'm not sure if you can see there okay it will make look it's gone through to the next page tiny tiny bit on that page sometimes you'll get as well can you see this on the edge this is what happens in all your journals, yeah? The reason it goes through here is, remember, this is a stitched book. Can you see the stitches there? To have a stitch, you have to have a hole. This is liquid. Liquid is going to go through a hole, okay? It, that's what's going to happen. So sometimes you can be inking this page and a little bit might come on one further down here. It is what it is. But if you look at my finished journals, because I know it freaks some of you out a bit, but look at my finished journals. Look at them, the batter. There's ink everywhere. Can you see? Let me see if I can find a page that's got where ink has gone through. Typically today, I probably won't be able to, to find one. Here we go. So this is a page. This is half finished. This isn't. But can you see this? This is ink that's come through from another page back here. I don't know where it will have come through. But as you use your journal more, more ink will come through. I either ignore it or sometimes I doodle around it. I'll doodle and I'll make it part of the um, part of the design. Let me see on here. But when you finish, when you finished your pages like this, you don't notice them. You don't notice all that. And I think a lot of you, because you're beginning, 
you're very conscious of what, what what does it look like, what does it look like, and you forget that that's just the butter, it's the butter in the sandwich, that's all it is. When you get all this on the top, oh, can you see down here? That is like this, do you mind me showing you here? Oops, sorry, no. Can you see where it came there? Here. But nobody, when I'm handing my journals around, nobody says, oh, that's a beautiful page, but look at that bit on the side. So you just have to go, go with it. Okay, when you're inking, ink just does, here we go, there's another blob here, ink does what it does, and that's all. And I like that, it's the very fact that it's unpredictable that I love about ink. So let me think, is there anything else? I think that about covers, um, I think that covers all the problems, the things I've been asking. Oh, last thing, I know what we'll do. Oh, look, I've got it on the front as well, you see, messy. Um, how do I get it off my hands? Because when I do a session, like I said, normally I'll ink, I'll ink for an hour and a half and I'll ink absolutely loads. So to get it off my hands, what I do is I use um, the craft scrubbing, the Ranger craft scrubbing, okay? Comes like this. Now, don't be deceived by the name as in scrub. Don't scrub with it. Um, but this is how I clean my hands. And what I do is I drop this into the bowl, into the basin, I don't know what you call it, um, and let water run on it while I add some soap to my hand. So I add some soap, just normal soap. I can't really use many perfume stuff. I can't use things like, I don't know, we call it Swafiga in England. I'm not sure what you'll call it here, but anything thick and gloopy or, or perfumed. So this is getting wet. I put soap on my hands and I pick this up and I use it like a bar of soap. I just do this and I'll just gently, if I've got a a bit that's a little bit more I'll just gently rub it rinse and do it again and most of this ink will come straight out okay it's very it's not soft as in soft it's just very soft on you it never I have really bad skin I have a lot of um, psoriasis and things and it doesn't affect me at all it's great but if you scrub 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 you will hurt yourself so just use it like a bar of soap like this now, if you've been a really messy pup, like I am when I'm doing a lot, it can be quite ingrained. You should, I sit in the bath on a night. When I'm really messy, I'll have a bath. And I sit with my, my hands underneath my legs so they're jammed in the water. And that usually brings it off. But these just last. They slowly wear down. But they just last and last and last and last. So I always have one of these in my bag um, as well. And that should be it. It should be all cleaned and done. Everything I've just explained is in the book if you um, want the book. So I talk about um, all the different tools of the trade, the different inks and things like that, anatomy of a page, the colour theory and then the step by steps, full page of using. But those were the things that um, apparently crop up the most. So I just thought I'd do a little video on you. So it's easy when you know how, isn't it? Bye.